Okay, so today's staff is not Pace Ion in Baba Basra's Lim Prachena Kol Beis Yisrael and the Sudan Basar Shivya. We're at the two dots before the Mishnah, not at the Mishnah and Pace Ion, about five lines before that. The Mishnah had said a few, day, a few days ago that if you're buying fruits, as long as you make a Mashiach, you pull them, you are cone as long as there was a price set up for it, even if you didn't measure it out. Okay, let's say you're in the seller store and you want to acquire it, you can't make Mashiach in the store. And let's say they're too heavy to pick up. So what you could do is you can rent the space on which the fruits are sitting. That's another way to do it. Then what about you buy flax? Flax, we said, is um, it says over there that you, you should pick it up. What do you pick it up? If it's heavy like the fruits in a big bag, we said yesterday, then you should be able to pull it. Why do you have to say you have to pick it up, make a high ball? The answer is, as we said, because flax is not easy to put in a big bag or it falls apart. So... Uh, you can, uh, you have to lift it up. Let's say it was attached to the ground. Less the end of the mission says in Mahima Khubalakarka, Tullish Kosh, if you if you detached a little piece of the flax, you were cone of the whole thing. How does that work, says the Gemara? What are we talking about? Says the Gemara a few lines before the Mishnah on Pace Ayan Madaf. What does that mean? The guy says, Okay, I sold you the flax, so you give me the money. And you make a little touch, you, you cut off a little piece, you acquire them all. How does that work? What's the kind of kingdom that are Mapshashis of my skinan? The Omerlay told them, Lay ya failha kalshu, go improve a little bit. The Kanikamashala, meaning this Rajbam explains this, even though he wasn't buying land, he was buying the flax, but the flax is attached to the land, so it has the whole same rules of land, meaning show some ownership. Go improve it a little bit. You've cut off a little piece and make it easier, let's say, for plowing afterwards. You've improved the karka. Therefore, you acquire all the karka. Remember, if I had 10 pieces of land, one in China, one in Russia, one in America, one all over the different pieces all over the world, I made a Kenyan one. We once said that Sadna and Arachadu, the whole, all the ground in the world is really attached to one another. So if you make a Kenyan on one, you made a Kenyan on all the karka. Not only that, we said that the Chasm Shem movables can be acquired with the land. Over here, I'm acquiring land and land. I'm acquiring flax. It's all attached. So he says, how do I make the Kenyan? It's like karka. I'm not, I didn't buy the karka, but I'm buying the flax on the karka. So show ownership. Improve it a little bit. That's how he acquired it. So that's this little bit of a weird uh, example in the end of the Mishnah. We said, yeah, if the flax is attached, you lift it up. If it's attached to the ground, make a little improvement in the ground by lifting up some of the flax, clearing, making a clearing, and then you acquire all the flax that's attached to the ground. I work with a, a leash. If I have a, a, a big box of apples, why can't I take a, a some of it of apples and, and, and acquire it? Doesn't work. Doesn't work. That's how the Chacham set up the Kenyan. It doesn't work that way. When it comes to karka, karka is attached to the ground, so it, it's all considered attached. For example, same thing with the boat. If you pull the boat a little bit, you pull the whole boat. But over here, if you pull a gigantic bag of apples or a truck full of apples, you pull it a little bit, you pull the whole thing. But if they're all not attached to one another, it doesn't work. The only way it works is if you acquire karka, the chasm sheishlach rayas, that can acquire the chasm wherever it is. If I bought from you a piece of land and I also bought your car, but your car is in New Jersey and your suit is in some other place, I can and we have a deal. I'm going to buy all of it together. If I make a kingdom on the karka, I get all the other stuff with it, even if it's not on the on the karka. That's a special law when it comes to karka. But if, if, if it works for truma, if I want to take truma, I can take a little bit from, from, from the whole bushel, the whole basket. But whatever you took, you have to take the truma. From the whole basket. Take them, take them all, no, you're only, you're, you're, truma means that you're separating. You're separating this from the whole amount. So whatever you separate is truma. Whatever you don't separate is not. Right? You could say, I'm designating all this as truma. I got a gigantic warehouse. And I'm designating this corner, so I designated it. I don't have to make a Kenyan in it. I just have to designate it. That's good enough. That's separating it from the rest of it. Says the Mishnah on Pesayim Rav. Mochi Yain B'Shem L'Chabero. Here we're getting back into the issue we discussed yesterday and the day before. When you're, there's a buyer and a seller, and they're in the middle of the deal. The hook row who's in the middle, while they were measuring it out, the price went up, the price went down. Somebody wants to go back on the deal, right? If the price goes up, the the seller wants to go back on the deal because he wants to get more money. The price goes down. The buyer wants to go back on the deal. He says, I don't want this deal. I can buy it cheaper. If the measuring cup is not full yet, it goes to the mocher. 
meaning it still belongs to the moker. If you're measuring it out and it's not filled yet, it goes to the moker, meaning the moker still owns it and he can go back on it. Mishnah Shmalamiga, once the measuring cup is full, then it goes to the guest. Now, it's the same thing we had in the price the other day. We're going to say, well, whose measuring cup is it? The Gemara is going to ask that right away. Imoya Sarsur Benayim. Sarsur is a middleman. The middleman would get involved. They would, you know, what happened was they would come to the market. There would be market day, right? Buyers would come, sellers would come. Then there's always, I uh, call them brokers, middlemen, who buy from one and sell to the other. They supply all the goods. They live in that city where the market is. They have the measuring cups and the tools and all the stuff necessary to make the deal happen. So they buy from the buy from the seller and sell to the buyer. They make their little commission on the side. Let's say there was a sarsa there in between, as we'll see. It was his measuring cup. I think Mara's going to explain and then the chavis or the measuring cup broke in middle. It's his loss. He's responsible for it. It was his measuring cup, and he was there. The Gemara is going to talk about this in detail. Here's the deal: when you buy and sell, so I say I'm going to fill, I'm going to fill up this measuring cup. What they had, they had big barrels, and they filled up a measuring cup of whatever it was, two liters. And when they filled it up, there's after he filled it up, he's got to give them three more drops. He's got to let it run off. You know, that you gotta you gotta let it all run out. You're measuring out, let's say you measured out two liters, poured it into the locas uh that from the measuring cup, which was we'll see was like um didn't belong to either one of them, belonged to the middleman. And then he poured it into the locas uh to the to purchaser's uh uh whatever jug or whatever jug. So he's gotta also leave let, let wait for the last three drops to come out because there's always some drops left in the in the container that you're pouring from. So the assumption is that if the buyer bought two liters, give them the full two liters, and you got to let the last three drops come out. Once you've done the last three drops, you've let it ease out. Here, Kina, he inclined it, omits us, and then some still went residual. In other words, once they measured it all out, and he gave the extra three drops, then they put the measuring cup on the side, put it down, and there were still some residual from the sides that went down to the bottom of the measuring cup, that belongs to the moker. The moker doesn't have to, you know, make sure that every last drop, every any liquid goes in there. He's got to make sure that after he pours it, allow for three drops to come out. That that's good enough. The rest, anything left in the residual, he's moker. This the buyer's moker. A this is talking about buyers and sellers. They're in the market. What about a storekeeper, a shop, a makola today? You have a makola, right? And they're not like everything today is already pre-bottled, pre-packaged, right? You would you buy some wine or some oil or something in his store, and he'd pour out for you. You know, you bring your cup, and he'd pour out for you that. Does he also have to bother with the three drops at the end measuring up? No, because he's busy with all kinds of customers. He doesn't have time for that. So that remote Only in the case of the market where there's a buyer and a seller, like more wholesalers, he's got to give them out the extra three drops. So he says, Rabbi Yudomer, Erev Shabbos, Im Chashecha Potter. He's only Potter on Erev Shabbos, as we'll see. But the rest of the week, he has to give it to him. Erev Shabbos, everybody's buying and they want to make Shabbos. He doesn't have time to wait for three drops to come out, the, the storekeeper. But the rest of the time, he has to, just like a regular buyer and a seller in the market, not only a storekeeper, but even a buyer and seller. Tomorrow is going to talk about that. Like I just explained, Rabbi Yudomer is more Machmer, or is he more Maker? We'll talk about this. Okay. So at the beginning of the mission, we said, you have a buyer and a seller, and uh, one of them wants to go back on the deal. Uh, there's no problem if everybody's happy, but one of them wants to go back to the deal because the price went up or the price went out. So he said, it depends. If the, if the measuring cup is not full yet, it's the mochers. It's still the mochers. If it's full, it goes to the lokeach. It's more hamida demand. Who does the measuring cup belong to? If the measuring cup belongs to the purchaser, why do you say if it's not full yet, it goes to the mocher? It belongs to the measuring cup, belongs to the purchaser. We saw the other day that if uh, we had a shaila, and Rosh Baum says it wasn't really decided, if the buyer's cup, if the buyer's measuring cup is in the seller's possession or vice versa, is it bottled to the seller or not? And we, we weren't really posh at that. Apparently the buyer's uh, possession in the seller's store may not help. If he makes Hagba, then it always helps. Hagba works anywhere. But over here, what, what do we say? If the measuring cup is full, right? Or the measuring cup is what? It's not full yet. It belongs to the mocha. But if it's the measuring cup belongs to the calf, he should acquire it right away. If they're in a 
neutral area, like an area that they both belong to or a simta or that they're partners in or, or a simta or something of that sort. So what do you say that said, uh, if, if, uh, if it's not full yet, it goes to the mocher. Why do you go to the mocher if it's lokeach's uh, measuring cup? Maybe the, the measure cup belongs to the seller. So Mishina Smiles, Mita Lokech, why do you say once it's full, it goes to the purchaser? Mita the Mokri, it belongs to the Mokri. So who's, who's the measuring cup is this? Amravaloa, the Mita Sarsar. We're talking about where the measuring cup belongs to the middleman. So we said the buyers and sellers come from all over to the market. They bring their, their wheat or their oil or whatever they're, whatever they're selling. At the marketplace, there's always people who have weights, you know, scales, measuring cups. To facilitate the sale, and they take a little commission from the from the buyer and from the seller, and they make their money that way. So over here, that's what it means. It's meet a sarser. So it didn't belong to either one of them. It belonged to the sarser. It belonged to the middleman. So we say, basically, he's lending it out or renting it out. So as long as the meat is not full yet, he's renting out effectively to the seller. Once it's full, then he's renting it to the buyer. Now it's ready to be poured into the buyer's own uh, bottles. So the meat is sarser. I have a medic tiny safe and save it says in my sarser. But I am nish brachavis nish will sarser. But the end of the Mishnah says later on. It says we just learned that if there was a sarser there, if there was a middleman, and the thing broke a middle, he, it's his loss because it's his uh, bottle, it's his measuring cup. The chal the reisha lava sarser. It must be that the reisha is not speaking with a sarser. Says more no. Reisha meter below sarser safe of the sarser. But the whole Mishnah is speaking about where there was a middleman, but in the reisha the sarser wasn't there. He just lent out his measuring cup. So he said he lent out the measuring cup to facilitate this deal. If it's not full yet, the measure is, it's the, then, then he's renting it out effectively to the seller. If it's full already, then he's effectively renting it out to the buyer. But he wasn't there. The safest speaking about safe but he himself was there helping measuring it. If he himself was there, then it's what we call Shayla Babila, right? Then rented it out. It's his responsibility. It's not the responsibility of the buyer or seller who broke it maybe possibly with an own ace. Uh, they're not basically, they're, they're, if, they're, if they're borrowing it and they're responsible for it, then like an own ace is responsible or they were negligent, whatever it was. But if he wasn't there, then either one of them is responsible. It belongs to the mocher when it wasn't full. It belongs to the lokech when it was full. If he was there, then he's responsible for it. It's his own thing. He's standing there. And therefore their putter, if anything happened to it, it's his loss. Whatever happened loss is his loss. Says the mission here, Kino makes his We said, let's say <clears throat> the buyer, whoever it was, maybe he had the sell, maybe he had the sarser in between with the measuring cup. He poured it in down to the buyer's vessels, take home. He says, you know what? There's always a little bit extra. Take have patience, wait, wait till it all comes out. Wait for the last three drop drops. <clears throat> Once he's done that, and he inclined over the vessel, he put it on the side, and there's still some drops that are going to the bottom of the vessel now, that belongs to the, to the, to the seller. He saw like Rebbe Lezer, when Rebbe Lezer went up to Eretz Yisrael from Babel, Ashtra Laziri, he found Ziri, uh, he found Ziri, who was there. Omar, remember he had made Ali, Ziri had made Aliyah before. Omar Lehi said, Mikan Tana da Asni Rav Midos. Is there a Tana here who knows the Mishnayis that Rav, that Rav taught him the various rules about uh, measures, weights and measures? Mikan Tana da Asni Rav Midos. Is there any Tana here who could ask? Who can answer a question for me? Who was here? Rav wasn't alive, I guess, anymore. And he says, "Is there any Tana here who Rav taught the rules of Midas to that I can ask him a question?" Achve. So Ziri pointed him out from Yitzchak Baravdimi. He pointed out Yitzchak Baravdimi, who lived in Eretz Yisrael. Remember, he's buried in bubble in that bubble in Haifa, right? Be, people go for a bracha to Rav Yitzchak Baravdimi's kever. I think it's Rav Yitzchak Baravdimi in downtown Haifa. It's a special school for Shaduchim. So Achver is he points out Rabbi Yisroel Baravdimi. He's he's one who has been taught by Rav the rules of weights and measures. Amalei, Michael Kashlecha. So Rabbi Yisroel Baravdimi said to Rabbi Lazar, "What's your problem? What can I help with? May I help? May I help? Help you?" He uh, says the Tanai says Yakina meets the Rebbe Shlomoker. We said, "Listen, once you've already inclined the vessel, you've given out the three drops, the last three drops, and you've inclined it, and anything left residual that goes to the bottom of the vessel now so belongs to the Moker, belongs to the seller." I but Tanan, we learn Irkino Mitsa Rezu Truma Mu. If a man is giving Truma, right, and he comes to the coin, let's say the Truma was oil, right? Oil, wine, five grains, the derisis. And he let's say he brought some oil or wine, which was giving us Truma. 
the Irkina, let's say he tilted it over and still some drops came bottom. It's Truma. The guy, the donor giving it can't keep it. Here we're saying when the seller sells to the buyer and he gave him the three drops and then he put the vessel down and there's still a little bit residual there, goes to the mocha. When the donor is giving Truma in the same fashion, it all belongs to Truma. He can't keep anything. You've got to give him, you've got to uh, empty out that vessel that has wine that you're giving us Truma. You've got to empty it out till it's bone dry, as they say, right? It's got to be bone dry. You can't eat any, any reason Truma belongs to Truma. What's the difference? So, so, so that's what he asked him. Uh, you say it belongs to the Mokha. By the time we learn, when it comes to Truma, everything goes to the coin. You can't keep anything. I'm a lay. Right, my law, so he explains. So now this, this is being explained. Right, my law, I'm going to explain why Mishim Yush Bailam Nogaba. Here is very different because over here, the owner has given the the um, the buyer was Miyai. She got the last three drops, so there might be a couple of more drops that, that go to the bottom. He gives up on that. You know, he's mafkarit. It's a tircha to wait. The last, every last drop, he's mochel that. But when it comes to truma, it's not being mochel that you're mafkarit truma. Every Every last drop, every little, any little amount belongs to Truma. Therefore, you can't, the donor may not keep it. He said the storekeeper doesn't have to do these three drops. Right? That's what he said. The storekeeper doesn't have to do it. Then Rabbi Yudi added on, Erev Shabbos, on Erev Shabbos, he's potter, the, the storekeeper is potter from giving me the three drops. Now, says the Gemara, what does Rabbi Yudi mean? Is he going on the ratio? Meaning, what is what ratio? Is he going on the ratio we talked about the mocher and the and the seller and the mocher and the lokeach? And we say, what you got to give him three drops. And he's saying, you know, you got to give him three drops mocher to the lokeach, but not on erev Shabbos, right? You got to give three drops, but not on erev Shabbos. Erev Shabbos, everybody's busy. Is he going on that? Because our Buddha didn't say he didn't say ten bunny, right? We talked about in the in the first part of the mission, we talked about buyer and seller and a middleman. And then we talk about a storekeeper at the end. The storekeeper doesn't have to give the three drops. Rabbi Yudah says, Erev Shabbos, he doesn't have to. Who's the he? Is Rabbi Yudah going on the Reisha? Meaning, Ula Kuli, saying, listen, normally you have to give three drops, not on Erev Shabbos. On Erev Shabbos, nobody has to give three drops. Everybody's busy. O Dilma Seifa Koy Or is he going on the Seifa? Where we said, what? That a storekeeper doesn't have to give three drops because he's busy. And maybe he's going to He's saying, the storekeeper doesn't have to give three drops only on Erev Shabbos. But on Thursday or Monday or Tuesday or any other day, he has to give the three drops. Is he going Lakula or Lachumra? Tashma, here we'll bring it from a brisa. The Tanya of Yudomer, Erev Shabbos, Im Chashecha, Chenvani Potter. The Chenvani's Potter, Meshach Chenvani Torah. On there, you know, he's going Lachumra. He said, he said that buyer and seller, you always know, have to give three drops, right? And uh, the tan- then the Tanakhama said, a storekeeper doesn't have to do that. Maybe this is a storekeeper doesn't have to do it on Friday, Erev Shabbos, but the other days he does. So he's being Machmer. He's not going on the ratio with a buyer and selling, saying on, on Friday nobody has to do anything. You always have to give three drops. Then you said on Friday, on Friday uh, the, the storekeeper doesn't have to, said the Tana, because he's busy. Ravidus is only busy on Friday, but the storekeeper the rest of the week does have to give the three drops. That's what we're saying. He's being machmer, but not being, he said, he's going on the safer. This that the Sefer says that the storekeeper never has to give three drops, that's only on Fridays. But on Thursdays, he does have to, so Rabbi Yudah is coming to be Machter. Now you send, this happens a lot, people send their little kid, you have a six-year-old kid, sells him to the, sends him to the Makola to pick up something. Where is the responsibility here? So Shalech is he sends his son to the Makola, Upundin Biyaro. And he sent him, he takes out that girsa, but that's the pshat, Mashi's Mok said, but that's really the pshat, as Rav says. He sends them with a small coin. I'm going to call the coin a dime, because we all understand the dime is worth two nickels, right? So you have a pinyon, which is a dime, and you have a pinyon is two isers, like two nickels. So he sends them, the father sends the little kid with the jar. You know, again, things weren't prepackaged in those days. He sent him with the jar to the makola to buy some oil. And he said, he gives, he gives him a dime. And the kid comes to the store and he says, I want one nickel's worth of oil, right? That's the message that the storekeeper got. The storekeeper measured out for him a nickel's worth of oil into the bottle that the kid brought. Kid came with a dime and a bottle and he, and he put it down and 
The storekeeper gave him back a nickel. That's the change because he only wanted a nickel's worth of oil. So he gave him back a nickel and filled up the bottle with oil. Okay, so he measured out a nickel's worth, let's say, shemen. But not small sister, and he gave him back. So he gave him change, and he gave him back the bottle. What's the problem? The problem comes, Shavas took us. The kid on the way back broke the bottle. Yeah, and he's a kid. What do you want? Shavas took us. Even I say, so he lost the money. Hey, what do you want? A six year old kid. He lost the nickel, and he, and he dropped the oil. He lost, everything was gone. Who's responsible here? You might say, well, father sent him. But what do you want from the storekeeper, right? Chanvani Chayim. Says the Tanakama, the storekeeper is responsible. Why? Seems pretty strange, right? If the father trusted the kid. What's the storekeeper's problem? We'll see. Come on, explain. Rabbi Yudah Potter. Rabbi Yudah says, no. He's Potter, which is what we would say logically. Shalmanas and Shalku. The father sent the kid with the money and with the bottle, and he trusted the kid. So what do you want from the storekeeper? The storekeeper's Potter. We'll see why. Umodum chachomam Rabbi Yudah Chomer Modit Rabbi Yudah. Take your Potter when? The storekeeper never picked it up, the bottle. The kid came in with the bottle, holding it in his hand, and the storekeeper measured out for him the nickel's worth of oil, put it into his bottle. Then he's moda. The kid never gave up the bottle. The kid was holding the bottle. The storekeeper poured the nickel's worth of oil into the bottle. In that case, he's put. So the chumr moda that. So let's understand the other ratio, though. Let's say... The kid didn't hold the bottle the whole time. He gave it to the storekeeper. The storekeeper filled it up, gave the kid back the bottle, and gave him a nickel. So why isn't he off the hook? Why do you say, why does the Tanakhama say that if it broke on the way back and he lost it, the Chanvani is responsible? So we'll see. It says the Gemara, Bishlam, Be'isr, Be'shemen. If you're talking about the nickel and the oil, the nickel and the oil, what, what, what was lost on the way back? Think about it. The nickel, the oil, and the bottle, right? Three things, right? So he says, if you're thinking about the nickel and the oil, I'll tell you the machlokas. When he sent, when he sent the kid with the money, some learned that the father gave the money before, but the Pasha shot is that he sent the kid with the money. So you know what the chacham sheet is? Why is the story going? Because the father didn't mean to say, send the oil and the money back with the kid. The kid's a kid. He just meant to give him a message. You please, I'm like, he placed his online order. They didn't have online in those days. So he sent the kid and he said, look, I'd like to order a nickel's worth of oil. And here's the money. And send back the change and the oil and the bottle with your regular uh, delivery guy. You know, the Arab who has the, uh, who has the truck, you know, send it with him. He didn't mean to send it with the kid. He says, this, uh, the Tanakama says, so we do it. I'm just letting him know that I want to order. I'm not telling you to send it with the kid. I sent it with the kid so you would get the message because they didn't have to. Uh, yeah, he brought the bottle, gave him the bottle. Okay, he gave him the bottle. He said, okay, fill up the bottle, but send it back with your message. You can't send it back with the kid. The kid's not responsible. So, the if, the, pardon? That's called stop the Okay, stop the No, that's the machlokas between yeah. Rabbana and Rabbuta. What was the kavana? What did, how was the uh, Shambani supposed to understand this? The Rabbana say, no, he sent the kid. He didn't mean to send it with a kid. I didn't mean to say, if I sent, if, I, if you sent, uh, you know, a kid to the bank, you know, with $10,000, you didn't expect, you wouldn't do that, right? So here too, maybe he said, just letting him know what I want. I didn't mean for you to send it back with the kid. I meant for you to let you know that I'm placing this order. Rabbi Yudas said, no, the story they shot, he sent him as a messenger. I sent him that you should send it with the kid. So Rabbi Yuda said, if the father sent him with the kid, sent it with the kid, but the understanding that the kid's going to bring back the change and the bottle and the oil, it's the father's problem. It's not the storekeeper's problem. Whereas the Tehmakama said, no, I just sent the kid to let you know that I'm ordering. I didn't mean for you to send it back with the kid. That's the machlis. So that's what we're assuming now. He just sent them to let him know that I'm placing an order. I didn't mean for you to send it back with the kid. So that I understand. If the bottle broke, the father sent the kid with a glass bottle then the father was taking the risk. It's like you're losing it. You can send a little kid with a bottle. Kid could have been three years old. What did you expect? The bottle was going to be lost. You understand? Mela, the oil, which was sent by the, by the storekeeper, and the change that was sent by the storekeeper. So you could say, the Tanakhama said, I didn't mean for you to give it to the kid. I meant for you to send it with a responsible person. So you're responsible for the oil and for the change. I didn't mean for you to give it to the kid. Rabbi says, no, I meant for you to give it to the kid. 
But what about the, but the, but the bottle? The bottle the father sent. So the father took the risk of sending it. Father can't claim that the bottle is not my fault, it's the storekeeper's. The bottle was sent by the father. So the father trusted the kid with the bottle. So how can you say that the chadvani is responsible for that? That's right, but the dime is not the issue because he got the dime. The dime was lost, the nickel was lost, the change was lost. That's the issue. El Shavar Sluchas, El Shavar Zaveda Midasi, Amrav Hoshia explained this. Hacha, I'll tell you what happened. Why, why, why is it that the, according to the Tanakama, that the Chabani, the storekeeper, should be responsible for the broken glass, for the broken jar? Why? It wasn't his. And the father sent him with it anyway. So now, Hacha Balai, so the first Mar gives a few Docha Gedis. We're talking about where the father was a seller of bottles. He sold bottles. He sold bottles. And there was a price. It was a dollar a bottle, whatever it was. And and now the storekeeper took the bottle from the kid. Yes, the father, the intention was fill up the bottle with the oil. But he was also a seller of bottles. And the storekeeper said, oh, let me see that bottle. Maybe I'll buy some bottles here from my store. And he was looking at it to check it out, and they knew the price. Who could a shmuel like shmuel says? I'm a shmuel. I know to clean and I'm not savako. Let's say I buy a chauffeur or a bottle or any a glassware, anything from a from a craftsman to check it out, and I dropped it. What's the rule in the store? You broke it. You bought it, right? You you picked it up to look at it. You know, you you examined it. So that's shmuel's rule. So maybe that's the shot over here. Going shenad lachav and I'm not savako. And shmuel says I'm a shmuel. No, I'm not savako. Uh, banana spiotto, and it, it was an accident, it broke. You're chive to pay, so that's why the Tanakhama says that you're chive to pay for the bottle. Even the, the oil, we understand the oil and the change. You shouldn't have sent that with the kid, that's your fault, the storekeeper. But what about the bottle? The bottle the father sent. He, 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 he basically said, I don't care about the bottle. No, speaking about where the father sold bottles, and the storekeeper didn't just fill it up into the, into the kid's bottle while it was in the kid's hands, as we said. Remember the Chamer Moda, if, if it was in the kid's hands, then the storekeeper's not responsible. Here, the storekeeper took the bottle to examine it. Maybe, 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 I'll, maybe I'll buy a, uh, a gross of these bottles, right? What's a gross? 144? I'll buy a gross of these bottles. Let me see what it looks like. And he dropped it. And he's high. So if that's, that's why you high in the ratio, according to the Zanakama. So if that's the case, let me know what you But Rebuda says that the seller's not the, the um the storekeeper is not responsible for the bottle. Remember, Rabbi Yudas said the mission is Potter. He's Potter. Why are you Potter? If the storekeeper picked up the bottle to examine it and he dropped it, you say the storekeeper is not responsible. That means he doesn't hold the Shmuel. So what Shmuel says the Machlok is Tanoi, oh, man. Hard to say. You don't want to say, you prefer not to say that Shmuel, what Shmuel says is only according to the Tanakam, not according to Yudah. No, let's change it around. Now we're saying the mission a different way. That's right. That's right. The kid dropped it on the way back. But the kid, you're right, you're right. The kid dropped it on the way back and, and, and he lost it all. But the point is, even if it was Nenis Piotr, he's responsible for it. Once he picked it up to check it, he's responsible to give it back to the owner. And if he gave it to the kid now, it's his problem because he picked it up to examine it. He picked it up to Okay, fine. He liked to it, but it's not, not good enough. Once he picked it up, he's responsible for it. That's what we, we'll see. This is your kasha is good because the Gemara is going to explain it a little bit better, more clear. But at this point, we're assuming once you picked it up to examine it, you better make sure that it goes back to the father. That's a good point you're raising because awesome. why not? You gave it back to the kid. We'll see. We'll see. Father, the Gemara is going to explain. The father is also responsible. Give strict instructions. Yes, yeah, but he didn't. He, he, he did. he, oh, very good. If he gave strict, if he gave strict instructions, very good, very good. If he gave strict instructions, there's no problem. And he just followed instructions, but here he didn't give strict instructions. So Rabbanan say the assumption is that he said that he said um, uh, send it back with your regular delivery guy. Don't send it with the kid. Rabbanan says no. The assumption is that he sent it. Told him I sent it with the kid. Bring it back with the kid. That's the machlokus at this point. And you're raising a good point because James Shmuel says fine. Even if you picked up a check, but the kid broke it at the end. Okay, but he's still responsible for it to give it back to the father. We'll see. So Elo Rabba, but we don't like that reason anyway, because it comes out that Shmuel's only going according to another common, not according to Yudah. Elo Rabba, Rabbi Yosem Tavai, they explain it. <laughs> Here we're talking about where the storekeeper sells bottles. Listen carefully. So right? In other words, uh, what happened over here was the buy the storekeeper sells the bottles, 
Rabbi Yehuda goes according to his reasoning. He says, no, I said send it back with a kid. Right? I, I sent the kid. Send it back with the kid. Therefore, the storekeeper is potter. For Abara and say, go to their reason. No, I meant I didn't mean you to send it back with the kid. I meant you to send it with your messenger. So therefore, if you're a self, Rashbam says, Rashbam in the wide, first of the widest line says, belong, didn't belong. The, the kid just sent the money, right? Came with the dime. And he said, I want a nickel's worth of oil. And the, and the storekeeper put it in his bottle. He says, listen, here's a dime. Buy a nickel's worth of oil and a, with, with the bottle. Like a minute, the father didn't mean to destroy it. Therefore, therefore, the Tanakhama says the the seller, the Chanvani is responsible, right? Because, because again, this the father only meant to give him a message. Here's a nickel, or here's a, here's a dime. Send back a nickel with oil and a bottle. And the Chambani was selling the bottle. So if the Chambani uh, sent it with the kid, the Chambani is responsible. Whereas Rabbi Yudas says, no, I sent the money back because I'm assuming that you'll send it back with the kid, including the bottle, including the bottle. Therefore, the Chambani is potter. So okay. Change, so changing the whole Changing the case, exactly right. Changing the case. Because we're trying to understand What's the basis of the machlokas? We, why? Because we understood the nickel and the oil. But why is why according to the Tanakama would the storekeeper be responsible for the bottle? Because it was, it was never the, 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 the father's bottle, but it was the storekeeper. Okay, the that's bottle. the answer we're saying now. It's, it's exactly. That's what we're saying right now. We're saying now, boy, we're not done. We're not done. We're, first, we assume that the father sent the bottle, right? So the father basically threw the bottle out if he gave it to the kid. That was our question. So we said, no. First, we're speaking about where the father sold bottles and the storekeeper took it to examine it and therefore he's responsible. Understanding Kurt's question also. Uh, fine, he's responsible, but he gave it back to the kid. We'll see an answer to that in a minute. But um, that was one case. But we said, um, that if that's the case, um, Shmuel's only going according to Rabban and not according to Rabbi Yudah, because Shmuel says that the the guy who examined it is responsible for it. Rabbi says he's not responsible for it. So how do you understand Rabbi Yudas? We say no. We're speaking about where the father only sent the money and requested oil, and the the storekeeper gave him the bottle. The storekeeper sells bottles. Okay, Rabbi Rabban say I only meant this. The father only meant to say send it with your regular messenger, and it was your bottle. Your, it's your loss, you know, and you have to pay for the oil and the and the nickel also. I didn't mean for you to send it. Uh, with the kid. I meant for you to send it with your regular del delivery guy. And Rabuta says, no, uh, he meant to send it back with the kid. That's why the, the time, that's why he's bought it. But if that's the case, uh, but now how do we understand the Seifa? The end of the mission said, that the Chachamur Modish Rabuta, that if the bottle was in the hands of the Tinog, of the kid, when he poured it, Umar Khabana talk and then measured into Shekhabani Potter, the Khabani's Potter, Bahmad Lai Bahmad Lai Do What do you mean? <laughs> what difference does it make? If we say <laughs> that according to the Tanakama, why is the storekeeper responsible? Why? Because the father only meant to say, send it with your delivery guy, don't send it with the kid. So why did the Khamar motive him if the if the bottle was in the hands of the kid? What difference does it make? The bottle was the storekeeper's, right? The father sent him a dime <laughs> with a message, send back a nickel's worth of oil with a bottle, but don't send it with the kid. Then he said, well, if he measured it into the bottle and the kid's holding it, then the storekeeper's not responsible. Why? <laughs> it was a storekeeper's bottle and he didn't mean for you to send it with the kid. So that doesn't make sense either. El Abai Baravan, Rafina Baravan, these two brothers, Abaya and Hanina, both brothers, the sons of Rabavan, number to write said, Achmayaskinan, Seven case, going to not the Lomad Ba, right? We're going back to what we said originally. Don't speak about where the Chambani uh, sold bottles and don't speak about where the father sold bottles. Forget all that, right? We're not talking about a case like that. Masis Lava Balbai says Rash Baham Velo Bechavani Mokzuch. My Elegon should not Lomad Ba Tal Hashemin. The kid came with the dime and the bottle. The father sent the bottle, right? And he said, Give me a nickel's worth of oil. Put it in the bottle. Not the lamed ba. Ukid rabba da marabba. Ikishen is chayav ba. Ah, said like this. 
there are cases when you're not employed to do something. For example, if let's say you find a lost item, right? Uh, a dog is lost or a cat's lost and you're mechuyif to return it. You know who the owner is, right? You find the lost item, mashallah sabedim. Let's say the person who found it is an older person or a rabbi with a big kapot or something and it's not proper for him to go running after the dog. He's not, he's not mechuyif to do mashallah sabedim. It's salam to me, he can look away. However, if he started to kick the animal or strike the animal to send him home, once he started, he better, he better finish. Because that, because then he's responsible. Basically, maybe, maybe pushed him away. Rabbi says, "Ikisha, once you kick the animal or, or struck the animal, then you have to return it all the way." So the same thing over here. Once the storekeeper took the bottle from the kid, he's responsible for it. Yes, the father sent the bottle, and the father took the risk that maybe the kid will drop the bottle on the way there. But once the once the storekeeper picked up the bottle, he's responsible for it. Rabbi Dom Rabbi Gishon's Chaypa says the Gemara, wait a minute. Eimer Dom Rabbi of Avalachayim. Rabbi's talking about a live animal, right? That an old man or a rabbi found a live animal, a donkey or a dog or whatever, and he knows it belonged to the uncle. He doesn't have to return it because he's not going to start dealing with animals. But once he struck it, he says, go home, animal. And he hit it or told, spoke, spoke to it. There he's talking about. Don Kititu Nigra Brisa, because he, so to speak, he pushed him away. And as Elkicha, Elkicha, once he made him start walking, Gila to, to run away, he should have made sure he went back to the owner because maybe he went in the other direction. He high got the Omer. Did Rabbi really say? Rabbi says in a case like this, just because the storekeeper picked up the bottle, the storekeeper is responsible for it. Ella Maraba. So yet another answer. We still don't have a good answer to explain this Mishnah. What's the machlokas here between Rabbi Yuda, who says the Chavani is Potter? If the kid broke the bottle, lost the oil, and lost the change on the way back, and the chumsi is responsible, me, I, and uh, and the lion in our in our group of uh, of in our koil or whatever, we explained it. Who was this Ari? Who was the lion? Rav Zera, Mana Rav Zera. Rav Zera was the one who went up there to Israel and fasted forty days that he should forget the Torah bubble, not Zeri, but Zera. Rav Zera. You know what happened? You know why the you know why the according to the Tanakama, the storekeeper is responsible for the broken bottle? We understand why he's responsible for the oil and for the change, because he shouldn't have sent it with the kid. The father didn't mean to send it there. Why is he responsible for the bottle? The father sent the bottle, and the father was taking the risk that maybe the kid will drop it. The storekeeper took it, he says, Oh, this is a good bottle. I'm gonna use it, and I'm gonna use it to measure out other other purchasers here too. I'm gonna use it for a few minutes. I'm going to measure out, use it for other customers as well. Now, did he have permission to do that? He had permission. The kid brought the, the bottle from his father and he said, please give me the bottle, fill up the bottle, give me a nickel's worth of oil and go back and, and went back home. Now, what happened over here was the, the, the uh, storekeeper says, I like this bottle, let me use it for a few other things. So he borrowed it without permission. What's the rule when you borrow without permission? It's called Shoal Shalomidas. You borrowed it without the Without the owner's permission, I mean, that's the machlokas over here. Mar sabr shoel habe. He's a shoel. He's a borrower. Okay. Mar sabr gasan habe. If he's a shoel, he borrowed it and what? And he returned it to the kid. Okay. He borrowed it and he returned it. That's all you have to do. You're just a borrower. I returned it to the to the kid. Therefore, says Rabbi Yuda, I'm not responsible for the bottle. Yes, I borrowed it, but I gave it back to the kid. So therefore, I'm not responsible at all. Why did the Rabbanan say that he is responsible? Because he's a shoshal midas, he's a gazlon. If you steal something, it's not enough. Let's say I go into your barn and I steal an animal without your knowledge. And then I returned it without your knowledge. And something happened once it was there. That's not a return. I got to return. I got to make sure you know that I returned it to you. Heishev says, oh, means I got to make sure you know. So over here, <laughs> over here, the storekeeper took the bottle from the kid. Again, if the end of the Mishnah says, if the kid was holding the bottle the whole time, the storekeeper never never took it, then the Chamer Moda, that what? That the Chan Bani's Potter in that case, because I never took the bottle. The father sent the bottle with the kid. Hey, I was wrong maybe for not sending the oil and the change with my regular delivery guy, but I'm not responsible for the, for the bottle. I never touched it. You sent the bottle. And the kid, the kid dropped it. What do you want from me? I can't pay for the bottle. But in a case where the, the storekeeper took the bottle and used it 
in his store for other customers or whatever. He used it for a few minutes. He's a Shol Shlomi Das. And a Shol Shlomi Das, according to Rabbanan, is a Goslin. And a Goslin, once you steal it, you got to give it back to the owner, make sure it's a proper return. Not enough to give it back to the kid, even though the father sent it with the kid. But you stole it. Once you stole it, you got to make sure it goes back to the owner. That's the machlokas over here. So it's nothing to do with, you know, the seller's bottles or the buyer's bottles. The father sent the bottle. And, the, and as such, you're right, that the father took the risk with the bottle. But that's as long as it was in the kid's hand. Then the, fa that's the, the, the father's not responsible, the, uh, the storekeeper's not responsible for the bottle on, the, on that, right? Uh, but, but, once he, but once the storekeeper borrowed the bottle, he better make sure it goes back to the owner and not enough to give it back to the kid. And that's why if you look at the Mishnah, back in the Mishnah, the last words of the Rashbam in the Mishnah, before,